This is a short guide for the analog curve settings. Analog curve settings is an advanced option, but it's very important to know if you really want to get the most out of the wooden one. Now you're probably already a little bit familiar with the analog curve settings, as in you could choose from these different presets from linear, aggressive, slow, smooth, or instant, and it would change this graph in the utility. But you might not know exactly what the effect is, and that's exactly what we're going to cover in this video. So first I'm going to go over the interface and how to change the graph, and then I'll explain what the effect is in a game. And we're going to take two example games, Overwatch for the basics, and Counter-Strike Source for a more advanced curve setting. So let's start off with the interface. The interface is quite simple. You have your graph here. You see on the left side the value that the keyboard will input depending on the distance your key is pressed. So the value can be anywhere between 0 and 255. And the analog distance is from 1.5 millimeter up until 3.6 millimeter. But the total key travel is from 0 to 4 millimeter. So just keep this in mind. That means that from 0 to 1.5 millimeter, there's a dead zone, meaning there's no input. The graph itself is very simple. You can either change the graph by choosing one of the presets, or you can change the graph yourself by just selecting one of the dots and moving it anywhere on the graph and you'll see a change. Now two big things here is that the first dot, you can apply an anti-dead zone. That means that once the keyboard detects the key press, it will start from a higher analog value than from zero. This can be very useful for Overwatch, for example, that we'll go through. And on the other side, you can change the ending analog value. Now, most likely you don't want to change this. This is for a very niche use, which we won't cover in this video and might be applicable for some games. Now, the major reason why you wouldn't want to change the analog curve is because games are optimized for joysticks and not for a keyboard. That means that the game experience with the keyboard will be different than how it would be on a joystick. And we want to compensate that experience by changing the analog curve. So now that you know some of the basics, let's jump into Overwatch and make an analog curve. So we're in Overwatch and the first thing we need to do is set up the analog profile for Overwatch. Now, if you don't know how to do this, there is a link below with a guide how to set up the profile. And now we're just going to focus on the analog curve and how to optimize it for Overwatch. So first thing first is we're going to check out the analog curve we have right now. This is a linear one. Now I'm just going to slowly press it in all the way till the end. For me, this feels like the beginning is very slow and it jumps to a high speed very, very fast. And this is not really nice because it kills my analog range and I don't really want to use this mega slow speed. And it also feels like it starts a little bit late. That's a lot of stuff and not every game will be the same like this. Overwatch is a little bit particular with this, but we're going to tackle it. So first thing first I'm going to do is get a better feel for what kind of analog value has what kind of walking speeds. So I'm going to just bump up this anti-dead zone here and move these three circles towards a point where we have a set value and we're going to try walking again. Uh, you can see there's still a little bit of a curve. I'm just at the switching point. So this is still extremely slow and we're just at that switching point. So let's put that anti-dead zone a bit higher. Let's give it another shot. And this is very interesting. I'm quite high in the graph, but you can see that this walk speed is still very slow. So that means that Overwatch has a very slow progression up towards the final speed. And we want to maximize on that mid speed. We're trying to find that mid speed. So let's put it even higher here. Let's put it way much higher. And let's see what happens in this range. Here we're kind of getting that mid speed that we're looking for. So this is the range we're going to aim for as a starting point, almost a starting point. So I'm going to move this middle one towards the beginning more. This is where I want to have this middle one. So I have this beginning range a little bit slower to start off with. And then this last one, I'm going to put it a little bit higher to progressively increase my speed. I'm just going to do a little bit because I feel the game progresses very, very fast. So now I actually have a really great curve. I have my slow speed, I have my mid speed, and I have my fastest speed. I feel I could do maybe a little bit slower, but in general, I don't really want to walk slow in this game. And then we have our Overwatch analog curve. So that was a simple way how you can use the analog curve for a basic setting in Overwatch. Now we're going to go to a more advanced setting, which is for Counter-Strike Global Offensive. In Counter-Strike Global Offensive, you can do something really interesting that can really give you a competitive edge. 
Now I've already prepared the analog curve for the situation of Counter-Strike. Now you can see here what I did is I put an anti-dead zone that goes a little bit over half of the graph and I put it in a straight line and then only towards the end it goes up to the last value. Now the effect that I created here is that I have a singular movement speed for almost over my entire analog range. Now you might ask why would you want to have that and therefore we're going to jump into Counter-Strike and see what the effect here is. If you're familiar with Counter-Strike you know that sound and accuracy is essential to the game. You have two walking speeds. This is the normal walking speed and you have shift walking and shift walking the biggest benefit is there's no footsteps and accuracy is increased. Now this is now the third walking speed which is the analog curve I set up and I call the wooding walking speed I guess. And you can see from this speed I'm still walking forward, I'm not making any footstep sounds and my crosshair is very precise, it's very tight opposed to the shift walking. Now this comes with a major benefit of course when we have an AK and we're shift walking and we do controlled fire you can see that there's a lot of spread. There's a lot of spread with shift walking, opposed to when we do the analog walk instead. There is very few to none spread. So that's a major difference. So you can walk forward, there's no footstep sound, and there's a major accuracy benefit. And that's what this advanced analog curve is the best made for. I hope you enjoyed this video guide. If you have any problems or questions, you're always welcome to contact us. All the links are below. Definitely come to the Discord community if you have any questions. We have a great community of people that are always welcome to help and are always open for questions too, other than sharing with each other and enjoying gaming.